Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring. I've got a couple of things that I want to hit around Limgrave today. A few more unique items to find, and a few fun surprises. And I marked a few of these out with beacons. These will show up on the compass, and you can also see these faint blue columns of light in the world where they're marked, and then it dissipates once you get to them. And before we move on, we will level up a little bit, spend our runes, and talk to Melina. This tiny golden aura is the grace of the Earth Tree. This light once shone in the eyes of your tarnished brethren, but now it is all that guides you. Also, I hear you can see them, can't you? The rays of grace that guide you through your burden. Upon the cliff in Castle Stormvale is a shard bearer, a demigod who inherited a fragment of the shattered Elden Ring. If the rays of grace signal the castle, then the Elden Ring beckons you. As an ally by pact, I pray that you are fit to face the challenge presented by the ring. Only time will tell whether or not we're fit for this journey. Wait, weren't you, well, you're back. Care to buy something? Yes, we have leftover runes, so I am going to pick up the telescope. On for 200 runes, there's also this note about something called the Flask of Wondrous Physic. It will give you a hint as to the location of that object. There are but we don't need it. People who yet survive in these lands. If the mood takes you when you meet one, then offer them some trade, won't you? My people. Wanderers all have long been spurned by the grace of gold, which is why we cannot settle, but instead are forced into this pitiful, unceasing journey. But thanks to that, things are not so different for us now, though the Elden Ring is shattered. I think this makes us kindred spirits of sorts. Your people, the tarnished, and mine. Perhaps you don't need to hear this, but see that no harm comes to my kin. We have a saying, we wanderers. Lament not your solitude. Expect no sympathy, no regard, nothing. But if anyone dares harm us, show them no mercy. That is our code, so to speak. Just the way we are, deeply unforgiving. Goodbye. Nice to do business. All right, so we're learning contextually a little bit more about... What the hell is this? I've seen these before. What it is like to be a tarnished. We are vilified and exiled. Guide and gatekeeper for those returning to the roots. I've seen this type of statue before my casual playthrough in a zone far north from here, but I couldn't follow that light. But I can follow this one. So I'm going to. <laughs> uh. Oh, it points us towards a little mini dungeon. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll make a pit stop in here. It's like a catacomb. Z. Stormfoot. Stormfoot catacombs. Yeah, I have not been here. Cool. A proper death means returning to the Erd Tree. Have patience until the time comes and the roots call to you. For the oh, okay, for those returning to the roots. It's a little interesting insight into their burial rituals. Oh, we have these little bastards. 
these little gargoyle dudes. Uh, and yep, that's one on the left. Take care of this. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's... Whenever they do that, they're winding up for, like, a big four or five hit combo that they just run forward to do. Oh, or they're stepping back to throw bullshit. <laughs> oh, those can be really annoying enemies. And it looks like we're in for a dungeon full of them. not particularly trusting any of these corners anymore. Also, something they really like to do is cling to the walls and the ceiling. Locked by some contraption. So, yeah. If you were thinking this reads a little bit like a chalice dungeon, just from the aesthetics here, you were right. They've They've kind of repurposed the chalice dungeon idea by, one, making each one a bespoke designed mini dungeon rather than, like, some limited procedural generation. And two, they speckled them uh, throughout the map as small challenges that usually give you a cool boss to fight or, like, a route that gets you somewhere unique. Carefully be wary of up and then right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's cute. I love the message system. The sense of connectedness it fosters despite the intense solitude of these games. Okay, cool. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's so good. I love it. Okay, so it didn't look like there was anything behind that flamethrower. I could see an item behind this one. So we're gonna time this. Chug a lug. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! <laughs> it's so much worse than I realized. Oh my... I can drag them out into the fire? This... is ugly. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> oh, oh no! Wait, maybe it's fine? Good lord. I saw, like, I saw two of them, and I assumed there was at least a third one, and I was just going to dart for the items, <laughs> and it just got, it, it looked like progressively worse idea the closer I got to them, but then I was just so committed. <laughs> All right, we got you. Never ever leave a corner unattended, especially with these guys. Grave Glove Wart. Uh, these Glove Warts we, that we've been picking up are going to be used to upgrade our Spirit Ash summons eventually. Okay, so there's definitely... Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, aw, for coming to me. Not making me round that corner and beat you out. There we go. Need to be using the R2 a little bit more against them because they are tiny and fast. Aw. Just wanted to do a little stomp. Wandering Noble Ash is off to try that out. Summons five Wandering Nobles? 
I mean, one of the most invaluable aspects of the spirit summons, or really any situation like co-op, that involves you um, putting an enemy in like a 2v1 situation. The most valuable aspect of that is just having something to tank for you or distract the enemy so you can get totally free safe damage in. It's not even like the damage they contribute to the fight. So five, woo. We're just gonna rest up and replenish our flasks now that we have opened the way to the boss. Also, just barely do not have enough runes for that level up. Very curious to see what this is. Okay, it's like a cat? Huh? The way this moves is, um? <laughs> the way it moves is so stiff. Is this a, a living statue? Erdtree Burial Watchdog. This is no dog. <laughs> What a strange design. I kind of dig it. This looks funky, though. <laughs> it looks like it's... Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, it's like some kind of gargoyle. Oh, my God. That's really cool. That's, okay, I have to be so careful with that. I am I think I'm rolling that too early because I'm getting caught by the shockwave after. <laughs> okay, I let this get a little bit spooky. This absolute dipshit noble. Oh, he's doing it. He's doing a little damage. Look at him go. Oh. Okay. Whoops. Oh, well, this is fine. This is fine. Just have to avoid this. Man, I want... Ooh, noble sorcerer ashes. Ooh, ooh. Oh my god. Returning to the roots. Ooh, I have to... <laughs> I need to process my thoughts about that. That was very cool. Oh my god, I can't believe I never found that. <laughs> I love this game. It's just a, a, a process of non-stop infinite discovery that stretches forever in every direction. Okay. So I think we'll take that, chew it over for a bit, and in the meantime, move on to uh, the next thing that I want to hit up. Well, actually, the first thing, I forgot that was a detour. We're going to explore the coasts a little bit. Uh, mainly because there is a unique item that also adds some adds an extra feature to uh, sitting at the Divine Grace sites. And it's just a cool little thing. It's not even that useful. It's just cool that it is one of the many, many things that you can find in this world. 
completely by accident or ignore because you did not know it was there. On one hand, the fact that there are so many like genuinely important game changing things that you can just miss or happen upon means the joy of discoveries is like even greater when you do find them. And the prospect of exploring becomes even more tantalizing because you know these big game changing things are out there. But also it will mean a lot of people will miss arguably crucial items and have a much less time a much worse time. By the way, this is the land octopus. We don't mess with the land octopus anymore. They are very, very tough. Uh, unless you hit them right in the beak. And you do not want to be right in front of the beak. At least not at this point in the game. It's actually down this way, a little bit further south along the shore. And while we're here, we can pick up some ruin fragments for the crafting system that I may very well just not ever use. <laughs> I've managed to avoid it throughout about 90 hours of playtime now on my casual file. <laughs> so, I believe in myself. It is possible. Now, this cove is a little bit shorter than the catacombs we just came from, but it is almost pitch black. You are going to want to make sure that you come in here with either the lantern already on your belt, uh, some kind of light spill, or a torch. If for no other reason than to stop you from getting jumped by all of the enemies. Oh. I thought he was calling for backup. Ruin fragments, string, cave moss, glowstones. Oh! Someone else saw me. We're gonna lead him into, into uh, a choke point. Or I'm gonna trap myself in a prison of my own creation for a little bit. Okay. There was just an ovary of a land octopus just hanging out, presumably harvested by the, by, uh, the demi-humans here. Which, props to them. Those land octopi are nasty. Okay, so just down below. Oh, there's a... That's not a player, so that's an NPC summon that we can grab for this fight. I guess it makes sense because what we have in here. Let's see how you do, Noble Sorcerer. What we have here is a duo fight against two of these demi human cheats. Extremely, extremely weak boss and very easy to stagger. It's essentially um, a normal enemy elevated to like mini boss status. With the major challenge being that there are two of them plus all the ads. Uh, the second one, it does not look like he's joined in or he's mobbing the sorcerer, but the sorcerer's taking no damage. Ouch. Oh no! This is not a good spot to be in. I'm stuck by the. Okay, I was being trapped in by the sorcerer. <laughs> Again, a prison of my own creation. I'm not sure if I like the sorcerer. He didn't feel like he was really contributing all that much, or even getting 
the attention off of me. Yeah, we're just gonna make sure that guy doesn't follow us or try anything. You're invincible while traversing the mist, but once you're through the mist, enemies like this. Oh, I hate it. Enemies can attack you through the mist if your back is to it. And also, they can get the attention of your spirit summons. Oh, also, just like in Devil May Cry, your jump has a little bit of invincibility on it. It's not enough to where you want to use it like the DMC jump to reliably dodge things. It's a little tricky to use in that way. Uh, but it can make a pretty big difference. Jumping attacks in general, I think I've said this before already, but they're quite strong. Try to pick all these off before we have to engage. That's kind of what got me killed the first time. And now this is just unfair. <laughs> we got the tailoring tools and the sewing needle. So now when we rest at uh, Divine Grace, we can, we can retailer some of the gear. Unfortunately, it is not as extensive as I wish. Uh, it's actually, the reason I call it a pretty minor item is because uh, there aren't tons of customizable gear pieces. It's mostly just an option to remove, like, certain dangly bits, like capes, uh, from certain outfits. Or add them. It's still just a cool thing to find. I was so delighted by that when I stumbled across this in my, in, like, the, for the first time in my casual playthrough. And it... It... instilled in me like this this tremendous sense of like oh i i can find so much unique stuff out here or rather it helped to cement that and yeah i can i can miss a lot of cool stuff too but like around every corner it feels like there is something cool to find and even after all of that we do get another extrinsic reward for that. Because the cave connects us to this island. And this decrepit, crumbling church. With a dragon in it! It is the Church of Dragon Communion! Let there be ritual. Examine altar. Ritual of dragon communion. So we can offer dragon hearts in exchange for these incantations, each of which morphs you a little bit into a dragon. We will have cause to revisit this uh, once we have some dragon hearts and once we have uh, some more faith to actually use incantations. So my plan uh, build wise for this playthrough is to change it up every now and then. Uh, Respecking is something that you can do once you be what is likely to be most people's second main dungeon boss, main story boss, like the second demigod, uh, demigod. Once you complete that, uh, there is an item in the game called a larval tier, which you can bring to that boss arena 
uh, and you get the option to re-roll your stats. And those larval tears become pretty plentiful. So I'm going to try to change it up every now and then. And I know what I'm going for right now. And it is going to be... We're going to power stance some halberds. <laughs> But first, we need to get our hands on a few. Oh, hey. Uh, these... God damn it. Gold glowing dung beetles uh, usually contain something like an ash of war. Yeah, ash of war determination. Uh, which is just a buff. Gonna avoid you. So, since finding that first mini dungeon threw my plans off a little bit, we're going to skip the other mini dungeon that I was planning on going for for now and come back for it in an episode or two. But I think you'll really appreciate the boss of it. Uh, I do want to make sure we grab the Flask of Wondrous Physic because it's quite important. And there's a good chance people will miss it because it's quite far out of the way. The note from the merchant that we could have bought gives you a hint. But it's still very easy to miss for how much it empowers you. It's very much like your Ashes of War or your Spirit Summons. What the fuck? Is anybody there? Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height. Who's Kenneth Height? How did... Okay. Oh my god, there's a lot. That did nothing. Oh my god, Kenneth Height is right now. Where's that even coming from? I do, not, I do not know about this character or this quest. I really like the five mil. The Noble Sorcerer? Uh, garbage. Broken. Broken in the way you don't want on your side. But the five of them? Oh, they're just little dudes. And they're doing so good. They're doing a great job. Just mobbing him. They don't do any damage, but death by a thousand cuts. Kenneth, I swear. Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Oh, Hyde. the great oh, Kenneth Height. the true order and celebrated repudiator of the false. He sounds like such an asshole. Grant me sucker. Where's he even at? I don't like this, Kenneth. Hello? Is anybody there? Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Is he up on the bridge? Fight. Yeah, that must be to it. True order and celebrating repudiator the false. Oh, I am curious to see where this is gonna go. Where are you at, Kenneth? Hello? Oh no. Is anybody there? There you are. Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height. Sir, ah, you've come to lend me your aid, have you? Well, that's... that's very kind, but, um... No. No, the help is very much appreciated. Even from a tarnished. Despite appearances, nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. You might have heard of me, Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave. Young Tarnished. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it. A fool and plumb mad to boot. Simply obsessed with blood. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? My fort lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. Take it back for me. Oh, I see. You wish to know the reward? Fret not. 
The great Kenneth Height is known for his considerable largesse. The celebrations will be lavish indeed upon the dawn of my fourth retrieval. <laughs> yes, now allow me to furnish you with a little advice. I would take great care to avoid Godric's tarnished hunts were I in your shoes. That depraved lot are obsessed with sacrificing tarnished like you for the sake of grafting. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped-up country bumpkin. Lord? Oh, don't make me laugh. First, he hid himself amongst the women folk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots rather than die like a man. <laughs> Has he no shame? The big girl's blouse. And to think, he's the blood of Godfrey, last of the golden lineage. Though you almost wouldn't know it to look at him. Yeah. I almost feel sorry for the chap the more I think of it. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? My fort. He is the second person we've run into to just out of the blue dunk on Godric. I love it. First it was Vare who called him decrepit. And then <laughs> Kenneth calls him a country pumpkin. And a coward. But I like how he didn't elaborate on what the hell he means by grafting. Although from the design of the grafted scion, we we can infer he's doing uh, some some profane science experiments on tarnished and reshaping their limbs, or just adding some new some new ones where he pleases. Finally, this is where we were riding towards, the Third Church of America. We've seen that statue before. That was the one in the beginning of the game. So that is, in fact, uh, Queen America. Uh, sacred tears are for upgrading the potency of flasks. And finally, we have our Flask of Wondrous Physic, which is its own... Uh, separate item from your Cerulean Tears and Vermilion Tears? Crimson Tears. It is a separate flask. It has one charge that replenishes just like the other ones when you rest at Divine Grace. Except this one you customize. Me? I'm searching for my purpose given to me by my mother inside the earth tree long ago for the reason that i yet live burned and bodiless there is something for which i must apologize i've acted the finger maiden yet can offer no guidance i am no maiden my purpose was long ago lost spoken echoes linger here Words of Queen Marika, who vanished long ago. If you wish, I will share them with you. Very well. In Marika's own words, my lord and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. Well, perhaps that might serve you in lieu of a maiden's guidance. That could have been bad. The memory card I was recording to ran out of space, but I, I caught it almost immediately. I was just... Uh, about to mix my flask. Right now, we only have that one tier that'll heal me for half of my health. Whenever we pick up another one of those teardrops, they'll represent a different effect that we can mix into the flask. You can uh, mix and match any two, and there are a lot. Uh, some of the effects 
that you can get uh, are higher max stamina, the healing, obviously, stronger charged attacks. One of them makes you explode. One gives you a protective bubble that absorbs one hit, which is really good. Um, and we'll be getting that later. Finally, we're going to survey one of the larger features of this part of Limgrave, Akil Lake, named for the dragon Akil, who presumably... Oh, hello, Smithing Stone, another one. Who presumably is the one who scorched these ruins. The Dragon Burnt Ruins. There's nothing too special around here. The thing that you always want to be looking for when you find these types of ruins is just a path that leads underground, usually lit by a torch so it'll catch your eye. This is what we want down here. I want to make sure I'm not being followed. Okay. Bring our wolves out because we're about to have a big melee against a ton of rats. That's really all we have to deal with down here are some low-level big rats. They're really nasty if they gang up on you or if they corner you. And there are a lot of them. The wolves really just turn this into a party. By the way, that door would normally be closed, but that's related to uh, the memory card running out of space. I already came here to open it. Luckily, I didn't claim the reward inside that chest yet, so let's find out what's inside. Ensnared in a transporter trap. Okay. Where does that bring us? It brings us to Celia Crystal Cave. A nightmare. Look how far out this took us into this uncharted part of the map. You have been trapped. You cannot travel to Sites of Grace until you rest at one. There are a couple of nice consumable items here in lieu of actual magic we can cast. And why do I call this place a nightmare? Well, for starters, there are these. Friends, welcome to hell. An extra special welcome to my $10 and up patrons for the months of February and March, including Cinderlin Ackerblom, Glenn Mullen, Victor T, Moody, Sad Salad Dressing, Evan, Kyle, Absinthe Miasma, Brenton Buchanan, Chris Mixner Croft, Cleric Beastie, Not a Tick with Wi Fi, and then a different person just named Wi Fi, Wolfman 500. Cracky, David Enever, and last but not least, Sam. If you would like to become a patron and support me over on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash scribe. Link in the description. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.